Recently, I finally got around to trying the new Outer Wilds DLC, and while it was a good time, it was also a painful reminder to me that no playthrough of this game would ever capture the magic wonder discovery the first one did. I wish I could just wipe my brain clean of everything I know about games for an afternoon and just jump back in as a beginner. Then I realized I can experience a first playthrough again, but instead through my favorite gamer guinea pig. This time, I made my girlfriend play Outer Wilds. In this particular game, I've made it a point to never be in the same room as her when she's playing. I want to give her complete freedom. There's no back seat in this shuttle. There are a couple reasons for that, but the biggest is that it was just way too tempting to try and nudge her in a direction or drop hints here or there. I want this to be as much of an adventure as possible, so she's completely in the dark on this one. What? In the same way I didn't want to rob my girlfriend of the wonderful adventure this game has to offer, I'll take the chance now to issue a spoiler warning for Outer Wilds. This is the definitive, wish I could forget everything about it game. I mean, it's not every day you can say a game is a once in a lifetime experience and not be accused of hyperbole. And it'll make sense after you've played it. Moving on. Watching the footage of her playthrough has been absolutely cracking me up. It's hysterical watching her fumble her way through the vacuum of space. <laughs> Um, I just- ah! The goal isn't really outright clear at the beginning of the game, and it strikes a fun balance between being an intimidating venture and an enticing one. If you're like her and can't even manage to survive a full 22 minutes, it might be a little unclear what you're even supposed to be doing. Aside from, hey, maybe I should try to stop the sun from exploding, most of the goals you aim for are born from finding meaning in your own investigations. <gasps> I want to roast a marshmallow on every planet. The game gives you everything you need to beat it from the second you start your first cycle and get the launch codes. It's just a matter of learning where things are and what they do. <gasps> we are entering uncharted territory. Your first big challenge is to figure out how to use your tools. And while the scouter and signal scope are pretty self-explanatory, the ship itself was a behemoth of a system for her to tackle. Uh... Ow. Her first flight went about as well as anyone might expect. She flew straight into the sun and died. This was the first time she encountered the trick of the game. You're stuck in sort of a Groundhog Day time loop. Unfortunately for her, she just thought she hadn't saved and that she was starting from the last checkpoint. She'd continue this repeated cycle of crashing for several attempts. We're coming in hot! <gasps> Oh, fuck. For one thing, the physics of space are pretty well represented here. There's no friction, so once you get going, there's no slowing down unless you compensate for it yourself. She really struggled to just get to the planets because she just kept overshooting them due to her perspective being a little off. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. No, 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 no! She also figured out pretty quick autopilot wasn't gonna do her any favors. How are we not touching the sun? When she did finally manage to make it to one, she didn't exactly come in softly either. I really enjoyed how her newbie experience compared to my own. There were plenty of moments where I'd be like, hey, I tried that, or yeah, that's what I thought at first too. It's the little things that sort of go unappreciated when you've got no fear of death. I love that my girlfriend had the exact same thought process that yes, I would like to see what would happen if I tried landing on that spinning thing around the sun. She was also famous for discovering something and being in such a rush to get back to it. She'd touch down on the planet, jump out of the ship, only to realize she forgot to put her spacesuit back on. <gasps> what just happened? Oh, I forgot to put on my suit, shit. It seems like universally every player that has played Outer Wilds reacts to the end times theme exactly the same way. No, 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 I'm trying to get inside. Immediately looking up at the sun to see how red it is and then frantically sprinting around trying to scan just a few more spirals before time's up. There you are, you stinking Mildred. Stop playing that music. Given enough time, I actually witnessed for myself a gradual transition from that mad panic at the sound of the sun exploding to her kind of mellowing out and just enjoying the spectacle of it all. Thanks for playing us out, buddy. I was most excited to see not if Outer Wilds will take over our lives, that went without question, but rather in what order. Like I mentioned, from the very start of the game, the doors swing wide open. You can tackle things whatever order you'd like. It became especially fun for me to just let her talk about the game, adding the occasional uh-huh, while mentally stitching together where she'd been and what she'd done. I'm in my suit. Ah! Ah! 
The game's an absolute masterclass in learning as you go and aha moments, so it was pretty fun to kind of work backwards having all the answers and watching somebody else figure things out for themselves. Aww, he's a cute little guy. Dinner conversations quickly turned into, did you try jumping into the black hole in your playthrough, or if you followed harmonica inside the plant, it splits into like a zillion tiny other ones. I could tell she got a lot of satisfaction from sharing information about how much she knew. I imagine the Harthians may have felt a similar way if not for the whole impending heat death of the universe thing and all. <sighs> Bye universe. One thing I remember thinking during my first playthrough of the game was that the game is just terrifying as it is gorgeous. I always felt so small and helpless at times, and she was no stranger to that same anxiety. Ah! What the fuck is that? My girlfriend started out pretty afraid. It seemed like she was always looking around expecting something to jump out from behind her and kill her. My theory is that it had to do with maneuvering in three-dimensional space. You don't just have to worry about something sneaking up behind you, but now you gotta worry about above and below. It makes me wonder how she handled a game that takes place underwater. Welcome aboard, Captain. All systems online. It would be a lie to suggest there was nothing to be afraid of in Outer Wilds. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. <laughs> it was always funny to me how she'd crack open one mystery, only to find it had three more waiting inside. I think this is why the game hooks so many people, because as you learn more, it sometimes feels like you know less. What is this thing? What the hell? While watching her go through the loop over and over and over again, I watched her become more and more nihilistic about dying. It's no shocker, but as she got deeper and deeper into the game, the fear of dying became less and less of an inhibitor. I have been stabbed, shot, poisoned, frozen, hung, electrocuted, and burned. With that being said, no matter how nihilistic she became, she always treated Dark Bramble like it was a real life or death scenario. It's all thanks to those giant anglerfish. <laughs> Space. Throughout her journey, she proved her biggest antagonist in this adventure was undoubtedly the sun. Even if you subtract all the supernova deaths, I'm pretty sure the sun makes up half of what's left. As it is, I'm confident you can count the number of times she made it off the hourglass twins without hitting it on a single hand. Every which way she turned, the sun was always there to put an end to her adventure after 22 minutes. So it seemed only natural she would grow determined to stop the supernova. It was that same determination that fueled her drive to solve the mysteries of the universe and put an end to the loop. Oh shit. I don't get to come back, do I? It's a rare thing, and I say this as lovingly as possible, for my girlfriend to understand something like this on her first try. Maybe it was all the lore surrounding the Ash Twin Project, or how incredibly intimate the relationship between you and the solar system becomes throughout the adventure. Whatever it was, she knew immediately what the gravity of removing that core was. This is it, her last chance. There's no coming back. <sighs> Deep breaths. Oh fuck, no. No! 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 I was so close! Uh. Well, that was a little anticlimactic. She was pretty bummed about getting the quote unquote bad ending. She was kind of discouraged about it and ready to walk away, but I reminded her of something that happened towards the beginning of her adventure. In the midst of all her spacefaring and ship burning, tragedy struck. She was going pretty strong until one evening this happened. Uh, what? Nick! She was devastated, because this was right around the time she was starting to fall in love with the game. And anyone who's ever lost a save file in something knows it's not always the most fun diving right back in. We were talking about it, and I was trying to cheer up when I pointed out in the same way you can never really experience this game for the first time again, you also don't actually ever have to start from scratch. What did the save file really have? Launch codes and ship computer? The things she's learned about the game aren't corrupted, they're all saved inside of her head. started. Oh my 
wake up, don't wake up, don't wake up. <gasps> hold your breath, hold your breath, hold your breath. Just hold your breath. Bonk. <laughs> Yeah, she gets mad credit and respect from me for seeing things through to the end. As always, my favorite part of these projects is getting to watch her grow and learn as a gamer. There's still so much for her to do and see, but for now, we'll let her rest. See ya, space girlfriend.